What's up, beautiful people? Jen here. Um, I know it's been a while since I did a video. So even though I'm still not really 100% set up with my backdrop and everything that I want, I still want to talk to you guys. So I actually asked on my Instagram, um, what video would y'all like to see next and I have a whole lot of ideas and a whole lot of scripts written and and things I'm gonna film but one thing I got a lot of responses about was uh, my pet peeves either that means like I'm a pretty bad nag or maybe y'all are just I'm, I'm just gonna go with y'all want to know what I think we'll go with that anyway um, Really and truly, I, I don't have the longest list of pet peeves, but I have been doing makeup professionally for seven years and have been interacting with and using makeup for well over 20, 25 years. So I have been in and around it for a very, very long time. And it's I guess it's natural to just kind of have things that irritate you. First and foremost, anyone who knows me knows that I am a hardcore spelling and grammar nerd. And it has always driven me crazy that, like, especially on YouTube or on Instagram, where you literally will see a picture of the product right there with the name of the product right there. How are you still misspelling it? Okay? You do not own a makeup palette. You don't. You don't. A P-A-L-L-E-T palette is made of wood, and you stack products on it to ship them places. Now, granted, if you can put your makeup on with a P-A-L-L-E-T, tag me. I want to see it. For those of you who are curious, it is spelled P-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Get it? Got it? Good. Moving on. Something else that I'm noticing more in the last couple of months, but it's it's been kind of an ongoing thing. I call it parrot syndrome, kind of like the bird. Um say a YouTuber or Instagram or somebody with a significant following reviews a product. And for the sake of uh, clarification for this, I'm going to use the, the Anastasia Beverly Hills subculture palette debacle as my example here. You will see well thought of, well respected YouTubers, reviewers, artists, etc. giving their opinions on said product. This starts a chain reaction of parrots, as in birds hearing something and then just repeating what they heard. You will see in comment sections and um, forums and messages and you hear a lot of people saying words like chalky or kickback. Terms that aren't really industry terms per se, but I, I see a lot of these people saying, oh, it has so much kickback. And I think, okay, I check their, their pages and, and their accounts. They don't even own the palette. There's no photographs of them interacting with it. They're literally repeating what they heard someone else say. You discredit those who know what they're doing, it's okay to say, you know what, I haven't gotten my hands on that one. I'm not really sure. Rather than asserting that you know something just because you heard Susie Rottencrotch on YouTube saying, oh, it's chalky, it's bad, it's so bad. You, If you haven't interacted with it, you can't express that opinion. That's unfair to anyone listening to your opinion. It's also unfair to the people who created the cosmetics. There are always issues here and there with batches. Some people's skin reacts differently to products. So just because makeup artist A and B are having this issue, that doesn't mean that you will. 
And most really good reviewers will tell you, this is my opinion. Seek your own answers. This is what I'm experiencing. Try this for yourself. And I'm just noticing, and, and if I'm wrong, feel free to tell me. I'd love to hear what people think about this. But it really seems like now, lately more than ever, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube especially are kind of overrun with parrot reviewers. People who actually don't own the product, haven't tried it, haven't used it, and they're still passing off typically very negative reviews. You can't review a product if you haven't used it. Period. Point blank. End of discussion. And that's, there's really nothing else to say. Don't review a product that you have not physically held in your hand and used. That's unfair to everyone. Another pet peeve, use of the word influencer. Now, when I think of an influencer, I think of someone with a substantial online following, hundreds of thousands, even millions of subscribers and followers. Someone who can offer their opinion on a product and their opinion is respected. Not someone with 17 followers who, to go back, repeats what they've heard. I'm noticing also more than ever people using the word influencer to describe themselves. And I get it. We're all, there, there are so many people in, in the online beauty game. I get it. I get it. I do. I'm in the same boat. Um, and I know that everybody wants to try to separate themselves from the pack. Everybody wants to make themselves stand out. I get it. I do. But if you don't actually influence popular opinion, then you are not an influencer. If you have 50 YouTube subscribers, and I'm saying I barely have 100, but I'm also not calling myself an influencer either. I still listen for opinions and thoughts from people who get these products before I do. But if you've only got 150 Instagram followers and you're only averaging like 10 or 12 likes a picture, you're not engaging with your public. You are not influencing. Therefore, you are not an influencer. Not to say that you can't be. Keep working. Grow your brand organically. Interact with brands. Interact with people. Interact with actual influencers. You can become an influencer, but, and it seems like it would be such a simple thing to say, but if you don't have influence, you're not an influencer. I, I can't, it should be obvious, right? Am I, am I crazy? I don't, I don't feel crazy. Not at this moment. I mean, sometimes. Moving on, and this is my last one, I swear. It's my last one. And I'm gonna get dragged to hell for this. But as I always say, con you know, constructive criticism is always appreciated. Uh, intelligent discussion is always wanted. However, if you're here to troll or to insult me or to be catty or petty, I got a three-step system for you guys. Mock, block, forget. That's simple. You will be mocked, blocked, and forgotten and lost in the threads and sands of time. So, again, you want to discuss things with me? By all means. You get catty and petty, you're shown the proverbial internet door. Now, all that said, the title of Makeup Artist. I understand 
that a lot of states do not have licensing specifically for a makeup artist. There are esthetician jobs or cosmetologist jobs, waxers, masseuse, um, facialists. There's all kinds of different job titles and things that may fall under the cosmetology umbrella in one state that don't necessarily fall under that umbrella in another state. You may be licensed to do one thing one place and not another. But at the end of the day, if you are not professionally working to a, as a makeup artist, applying makeup for editorial, bridal, whatever it may be, if you are not professionally working as a makeup artist, you are not a makeup artist. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you like to collect makeup, you like to play around with looks, and you like to try different things, cut creases, editorial blending, um, contouring, highlighting, lip art, whatever. That's awesome. But you are a makeup enthusiast. You are not a makeup artist. And there seems to be, yet again, in the online beauty community, a lot of people labeling themselves MUA, self-taught MUA, and I'm self-taught, and I've got ways to go. I learn something new every day, but I've also got a portfolio full of photo shoots, weddings, you name it, I've probably done it, business cards, uh, television commercials, I've done it. You have to you have to actually apply makeup to someone other than yourself professionally to truly be a makeup artist. And I am seeing so many profiles and accounts of girls who are MUA and they're not. And it's, it's not fair to the women and men who have spent countless hours in classes, who have spent countless hours on face charts, learning about skin, learning about skin tone, learning about hair color, learning about cools and neutrals and warms and naturals, and, and there's, there's more to it than buying palettes and taking selfies. And it's truly unfair to call yourself a makeup artist when that's not what you do. And again, I'm not knocking anyone. I get it. Makeup is amazing. I spend entirely too much of my life looking at pictures of makeup, reading about makeup, applying makeup, whatever. I get it. Hey, buddy. Come on. I guess my dog wanted to be involved too. This is Ray Ray. You want to say hey to YouTube land, Ray Ray? Come on. Come on. But yeah, if you're not, oh, and like I said, I don't want to bash anybody. I don't. I don't want to insult anybody. That's not what I'm doing, you know. But if you're not doing it professionally, you're a makeup enthusiast, and that's awesome. The world needs that, too. The world needs that. There's nothing wrong with just saying, you know what, I effing love makeup. Awesome. So do I. So, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we, we need to have some kind of distinction because it really isn't fair. There are women and men out there who have literally spent 5, 10, 20, 30 years learning how to look at a person and, and be able to tell by bone structure and skin tone and the porosity of the skin, their hair color, their eye color, etc., 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 precisely what to do. So, when you have not put in the time and honed your craft and studied and read and practiced and practiced, and one more time, practiced. It's, it's not fair to those who have to assert yourself as being one and the same. As far as an enthusiast, 
the, like I said, the world needs it. There's nothing wrong with being a makeup enthusiast. That's awesome. But we, we need to be fair to those who have earned the title, you know? Anyway, um, I'm sorry, y'all can see where I was swatching some lipsticks earlier. I couldn't decide what color I wanted to wear with this, uh, this look. What I'm wearing today, I'm very excited about. Uh, this is uh, LA Girl Cosmetics. I was so excited. The CVS around the corner from my house just started carrying LA Girl. So I bought some color corrector, some concealer, and a couple of lipsticks. So they'll be coming up in a video very, very soon. Um, what else? Um, oh, my eyeshadow. Yes. Oh my gosh. I have a review coming up for this too, but I got this from Makeup Queen Cosmetics. I am so in love with this, this brand. It's an indie brand and, um, they make the most incredible sparkly eyeshadows and really, really rich, um, highlighters. You see that on my cheek? That is Makeup Queen highlighter. It's amazing. So there will be a full uh, review and actually on my Instagram you will also see for my most recent swatch Sunday I did some swatches of uh, the two palettes that I most recently got. So anyway, um, as always, thank you so much for watching and listening to me. I appreciate it. I do so much. Um, please like Please subscribe. If you don't like it, dislike it, whatever, whatever. I know I'm going to piss some people off with this video, so whatever. Rock and roll. Okay, now the cat has joined in. I don't know if y'all can see, but Kirby's off camera. You guys play nice. But, um, yeah, like, subscribe, share this video. Follow me on Twitter at MissJenna underscore Lee. Follow me on Instagram at Miss underscore Jenna underscore Lee. And, uh, yeah, all that will be in the description box below. And uh, stay tuned because I do have a giveaway coming up very, very soon. All right. I love you guys. I will see you all soon. And, uh, yeah, keep being beautiful.